The following video is part of my Enterprise MPLS VPN deployment webinar. To learn more about my webinars, please visit my website. If an iOS feature is not specifically caring about VRFs, so it, if it's not VRF aware, then it will use the global routing table. Unless, of course, you have a TCP server running in the router. TCP servers have connection state. So they know through which interface the packet came in. They know through which interface the TCP session is coming in. So all the TCP servers in iOS work in VRFs. They worked in VRFs from day one. Telnet server, SSH server, HTTP server, they were always VRF aware because TCP is VRF aware. All the other features have to be implemented properly and you have to have configuration knobs. And some with recent iOS releases, most of the things are already VRF aware. It was a total disaster at the time when MPLS VPN came out and during the decade or so of MPLS development, they made most of the features VRF aware. But still, you have to be careful. For every single feature you want to use in the VRF, you have to check whether it's VRF aware or not. VTY access, VRF aware from day one. Clients, also available. Management protocols like syslog, TACX, RADIUS, SNMP were added a little bit later. IPsec, GRE, VPDN tunnels, they all work today, but if you have really old software running somewhere, you might have a problem. Client services, some of them appeared very early on, like HSRP, some of them were added later. Net, for example, was pretty late. And voice like H323 or SIP support even later. But as I said today, we more or less have everything, every feature being VRF aware, so you you shouldn't need to worry too much. But still, check before you use it. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session or by a recording, please visit my website.